Alright guys, so I wanted to provide a video to review 3D tracking with you guys and this is what your assignment is going to be related to. You're going to need to do whether you use this footage or whether you use something else. Uh, I would prefer you to actually use your cell phone and go out and record like pavement or grass or something like that. Just don't uh, record something that's like a shiny floor or something like that because you will have a hard time tracking something like that. But if you do you know, sidewalk or grass or something like that, that would be perfect and, and you can use your cell phone for that. Um, if you absolutely don't have resources to that, you can use uh, the footage that I'm providing, uh, but I think it would be fun to, to see something um, that, that you produce. So anyways, this video is, is a refresher because we've gone over this in class on how to uh, 3D track some objects into uh, moving live footage. I will also provide a couple videos in regards to 2D and if I have time I'll try to do one for Mocha and that'll just give you guys uh, some resources in, in how to do different types of tracking. Now I'm only a, uh, making one assignment and that's going to be related to 3D tracking. Uh, the 2D and the Mocha would, will only be just for, for your benefit just so that you can see how that sort of stuff is done. Okay, so first off, I'm going to drag and drop all this in here. Again, you can always do file and import. First things first, let's also make some folders. Some footage. Images. And remember um, that I'm always clicking off because if it's highlighted and I click a folder, it makes it inside, which is fine. You can always drag it out. Um, but yeah. You, you want these folders to all be separate. So I'm going to take the, the images and drag those on image. Again, I'm clicking these little arrows so that uh, off to the side so that they point down so that I can see what's in the folders. I can always collapse those, but I want them open for right now. And then I'm going to take this track 3D and I'm going to drag that in the footage. So now we've got things organized. I'm going to take this track 3D and I'm just going to pull it out here and I'm just going to drag and drop this out into my composition view and it'll just make a composition down here for me and we can see that composition right here and so now I'm going to take that composition and I'm going to drag that up into my compositions folder and now we are good to go we now have the footage in there and yeah so now we need to actually do a track on this and so the way we do our 3d tracking we need to click on the footage we need to right click on it that's going to bring up um, this this menu and we want to come up to track and stabilize and we're going to come to where it says track camera. And so I'm going to click on that and that's going to take a second to solve. And so we'll give that a quick second to do its thing. All right, great. Once we have all these little uh, colored 2D trackers, these each one of these little uh, dots is essentially a 2D track, but together they can make us a 3D track. And so you can see that those basically stick to the ground as we move along. Okay, so what a couple things about this. As I hover my mouse out here, you can see that it's trying to draw a, a triangle between like three, like and, and it just constantly changes, right? Um, between three little markers. Um, I never really like use this little default. Okay. Um, 
what we're going to want to do is we're going to either want to take advantage of just one of these guys or we're going to get want to get a, a good selection. Okay, so I'm going to hover my mouse over just one of them. And once that happens, you can see that that little circle goes away. And I'm going to right click on it. And that's going to pull up a menu. And I'm going to go down to Create, Null, and Camera. Cool. And so this has now created me a... Uh, so I've got my footage, I've got a camera, and now I have a null. And you'll see, if you look over here, uh, this little box all the way at the end uh, is essentially saying that this is a 3D layer. And now our footage, we don't want that to be 3D, right? Because it's been tracked and we can place things uh, uh, correctly within 3D to match it. So we're not going to uh, check the box for that. But anything that we make, um, we're going to want that little box there. And... And the tracker actually just did that for us, okay? You'll notice that it, it made a track null that now moves in position in 3D, and it automatically toggled that for us. Okay, so a couple things. If you don't see this menu with this 3D box, come right here where, and if I click on this, I can change it from either layer name or source name on this little bar right here. But, it, and it doesn't matter whether it says source or layer. But if you right click on that bar, you'll see these columns. You just want to make sure that all this stuff is checked. So if, if your window matches mine, if there's not a check next to something, go ahead and put a check mark next to that. And if, if yours matches mine, you should have everything that I have. Okay. Okay. A couple things. Now, if you notice, all my little trackers are gone, right? And so if we want to get those trackers back, you need to come and click on the, the footage and you need to actually come in and click on the effect. Okay, I'm going to pull that up. And that'll bring all that back up. Okay, again, just remember that there's projects and effects and so we just want to make sure that, that we're here. You click on that and click on that and you get all that back. Okay, so essentially we now have a null in 3D space. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to use this, this data that's on it. So if I come here and I click the letter P for position, you'll see that I have um, X, Y, and Z 3D coordinates for my position. And we're going to use this data and assign it to another object that will then um, position itself right in line with our, um, our null. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come back to project and I'm going to come here to the box and I'm going to drag the box down. And as if, as you notice, there's a blue line and that, as I move around, that blue line is going to show me exactly where that box is going to be uh, dropped as far as the layer. So I'm going to drop it right above the track 3D. I'm going to let that go. Now, real quick, this does have a problem that this has a white layer around it and I don't want that. So I'm going to do a quick rotoscope. And we can do that with this little pen tool up here. Uh, a couple reminders about this. If I roll my mouse in, I will zoom in or I can roll it out. If I hold space bar and let go, right, you'll see in that space bar again, right, it, it toggles between a hand and my pen tool. And so the hand will allow me to move around and then the pen tool is what I'm going to actually click with. I could actually use the menu up here and just click back and forth, but um, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, I would recommend just using your pen and your hand, okay? Um, and, and that'll make sure that also that things don't get messed up with your pen. The other thing, you want to make sure before you start rotoscoping something that it is selected, because if, if I click off of that and I use the pen tool and I start clicking, you're going to notice it's going to be making a shape layer which we can do some fun things with shape layers, but this is not what we're trying to do right now. So I'm going to delete that, delete that shape layer. I'm going to click back on the box. I'm going to middle mouse roll in. And I'm going to do this super rough. You can take more time. So with the box selected, right? You can take more time to, to really uh, get this really nice. But I'm just going to go super quick. And so, right, you could come and make these little humps for these things and so forth. I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is more about the principle of uh, how to do 3D tracking in After Effects. 
and not so much about rotoscope right now. That's that's a conversation for another day on how to do better rotoscopes. So I'm just doing this super quick. Cool. All right. So right away, I'm going to come back to this uh, quick selection tool so that I don't um, accidentally um, click and make another mask. Um, but essentially, you click all the way around with your pencil, and then you come back and you click on your very first dot, and it will close your rotoscope, and now you have a rotoscope. Okay, so if, if, if you don't have that, just it could be because you didn't get it clicked right back on there. Okay, okay, so at this point, we want to use this data right here to and, and assign that data to our box. So if I click on my box and I type P, the letter P, I can see right now I only have two coordinates, right? We need 3D coordinates. So we need to come down here and toggle the box on this little 3D box and that's going to, and I'm going to click on right here again and I'm just going to click the letter P, the letter P again. And now we can see that now we have 3D coordinates. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on this word and I'm going to do Control and C to copy and then I'm going to come click here on the position here and Control V as in Victor to paste that. Now, the problem is, is that our anchor point isn't set to the bottom of, of the box, right? So it's just going to look like it's floating in space, and that's not what we want. So if we click A, it's going to bring up our anchor point, and this first value is our X, and the second one is our Y. And so I'm just going to click and drag on that second one until it brings this little anchor point in the bottom matches perfectly. Now we do have this little uh, anchor point that we that could also be used, but I want you to know where it's at in here and how that works. So I'm just gonna match that anchor point up as close as I can so we can see that that's matching the bottom of the box pretty good. And so now we can see that the box is actually sitting in 3D space. Now, our box is a little big, so I'm going to click on the word box again. And I'm going to click S as in Sam or scale. And I'm going to scale that down. Okay. And this little chain right here means that they're all locked. So if I click and drag on one, you'll see that they all change. If I unlock that and then did that, then I could change it individually. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to keep all that locked, but that's just an FYI. Okay, and now I've got my box scaled down. And if I click my space bar, it will play through this. Um, if, if your space bar isn't working, you do have up here on the right side, this little preview. You click on that, then you could also click play right here. Okay. All right, cool. And so we can see that that box has been tracked um, into our scene. All right, cool. So that's nice. So we've got uh, something in there. Let's go ahead and look at how we might also do some ground replacement. So let's get all those 3D track points back up. So I'm going to click on my track 3D, click on my effects bar. I'm going to click on my 3D camera tracker. And so again, I want to use more than just three points, right? You see that little, it's drawing like a little triangle between three points so I want to do I want more than that so I'm going to come over here to the side somewhere maybe here I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to get over just one of them and I'm going to click I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click on another one shift and when I click on my third one you'll see that it, it's like oh you want those three points well actually I want more so I'm going to keep holding shift I'm going to come and click and I'm going to come and click and I'm going to come and click, shift. So just continue to shift click a few points. And so, as you notice, this circle is starting to align with the ground a little bit better. And the reason why it wasn't doing such a good job with three, well, as you can see, this is grass, right? And there's some depressions and so there's some taller areas. And so if you're using just three of these, this, this ground could fall off or get some really funky angles really quickly because 
you know, these, these little track points are not, you know, at the same height level, right? Like maybe this grass is a little higher, this little is indented, that sort of stuff. And so by getting more of a selection, you're just getting, you're giving it more data to work with. Okay, once we have that selected, I'm just going to come in here somewhere and I'm going to right click on the circle. And I'm just going to come down to um, create solid. Cool. And so now we have, if we click out here, we have a little track 3D solid that is going to put a little plane out there. So I'm going to click spacebar. So it tries to uh, stick to the ground in 3D space. All right, cool. I want to orient this with the camera a little bit better. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to do R for rotation. And I'm going to come to you on orientation. I'm going to come to this last number. I'm just going to orient that a little bit better so that it feels like um, that it's just kind of facing the camera instead of like where it was, like it was making kind of like a diamond shape. I just want to orient it a little bit better to the camera so we have kind of a straight line here, kind of a nice line on the side and so forth. All right, cool. Now, the next thing we can do um, if if we want to evaluate our track, okay, if we click on the solid, we can come up to effect, down to generate, down to grid, okay, and now we can see that we've got like a little grid, and so if I click my space bar or click my play button, we can then see like how that track is looking on the ground, and so that might give us some good data as far as like, you know, how good was our track, how good were the points that we selected, and so forth. So, um, again, After Effects isn't the greatest 3D tracker in the world, but it can do a little bit for us. And, and yeah, okay, so I think that's going to work okay for now. Okay, so what we want to do, I'm going to come back up here and click on Project. We want to actually track maybe like a different ground in there. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to grab the grass. I'm going to pull it down here. Uh, right to where the, the the little blue line is, like right above, or maybe even below the box. Okay, so I'm going to drag it right there. So we'll go with below the box. Cool. And so now it's uh, dropped in um, our grass for us, but you can see that it's not 3D. So we need to come over here to this little blank box and, and go ahead and add, click in there to add our little 3D box. Okay. And now this is a 3D layer. Okay. So what we need to do is if we click on our track solid, let's click uh, the letter P for position. All right. And I'm going to click on position and I'm going to do control and C. So I click on the word position and then control C to copy it. And I'm going to come to the grass and I can do control V as in Victor. And that'll paste that right on to the position in there. If I click P, uh, we can see now that those numbers match, right? So I could copy from this to this, but After Effects is pretty smart. So if you click on this and you copy that, and you just uh, go, you can just go paste it right on the layer. Okay, I'm going to come back to our track solid. I'm going to do R for rotation, and I'm going to click on our orientation, and I'm going to do Control and C to copy. And then I'm going to come back to the grass and control V is in Victor. And you're going to see now that has placed our grass, our new grass on onto our ground. All right, cool. So let's do this. So if I click on, I'm going to collapse this, turn the eyeball off for that so that, so that we're not getting the little grids. Okay. I'm going to come to the grass and I'm going to, I want to scale this and make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to do S. I'm going to click S on the keyboard for scale. And then I'm just going to come out here and click and drag just to make our ground a little bit bigger. Cool. And now we have this really hard edge. So we just want to soften the blend. And so I'm going to click on our grass layer. Okay. We need to make sure that that's clicked. And then I'm going to come up here. And there is an ellipse tool. And if you click and hold on this tool right here, like if you're on the rectangle, maybe it looks like a rectangle to you. Well, you want to come up here and you want to click 
and hold and come down to ellipse. Okay, so with our ellipse right there, I just want to make sure that the layer is selected and then I can come up here and double click on that. And it's just going to add an ellipse to our layer. Okay, now that gives us a little mask in here. And if you don't see that, you can just come here and open, open all this up. So this little arrow right next to grass will open all that up. And you'll see masks, right? And so you can have more than one, but you just want to make sure that that's open. And then we're going to click the little arrow next to mask, and it's going to give us some properties. And I want to feather this a lot. So I'm going to click and drag and pull that up quite a bit. Now, I can see that it's feathering off maybe too much. So I want to bring that expansion down, right? So I'm going to click on the expansion. I'm going to pull it to the left, and that's going to pull it um, pull it in, and then we're feathering out. If we don't do that, we might see the actual like sharp edge of the side. So at this point, this is nice and feathered. Now our color correction is way off, and we're not going to do a lot on color correction right now, but we'll do a, a little bit real quick. So for our, let's do our grass, and then we'll do our box. So for our grass, I'm going to select that layer. I'm going to come up to Effect, down to Color Correction, and Tint. And let's maybe put the amount at 90. And that's not too bad. Okay. And let's do, like I see some darker areas like in the grass and stuff, but these are like super dark. So let's also click back on the grass and let's do an effect color correction. And let's go to curves. And on our curves, We'll see this line with two little uh, dots at either end. This over here is our black or our darks. So I'm going to click on that that dot and I'm going to just pull that up a little bit. You can ignore this red one for now. That just gets into the actual red channel. But I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. If I bring it up quite a bit, you'll see what's happening out there. So I'm going to bring it up, keep it still in that box. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now this is our bright, so I'm just going to bring our brights down and just kind of match that up maybe a little bit better don't want it too dark but yeah and you could spend more time kind of matching all that up but I'm just kind of eyeball that I'm just kind of eyeballing colors and stuff like that but yeah you can play around with that some more uh, let's also put a quick uh, tint onto our uh, box. So I'm going to click on the box, go to effect, color correction, and down to tint. Oops, I did tritone. I'm going to delete the tritone. Box is selected, so go effect, color correction, and tint, right? So I just went one too far. So I'm going to do a tint, and I'm going to pull that down. Just a little bit, maybe somewhere in there. So now if I click off on that, we'll see that we now have something that's been tracked into our scene. And so we can click our little play, or I'm going to click spacebar, and we can just uh, check things out and see how things are looking. Cool. So things have essentially been tracked into the scene and a little bit of color correction. Now, technically speaking, uh, if I were uh, doing this, I, I would probably want to figure out my perspective lines, right? When you start thinking about 2D, since this box, really, this is really 2.5D, okay? Because this is still just a 2D picture that's been positioned in 3D space, but we, our perspective lines I can tell are completely off, right? Because the horizon in reality would be somewhere right here and all of our vanishing points should 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 end at the horizon. But I can see like these vanishing points go like way up here somewhere. So um, we're not gonna worry about that for right now, but that would be something that you might want to take into account, right? Like so maybe you would you would need to um, 
rotoscope that part out and do some distortions to make sure that that matches your the 2D perspectives of the scene. Uh, but again, that's a little more than the scope of this assignment. But it's just something like if you're really interested in 3D tracking and all you have is is Maya, or I mean After Effects, so you can't use something like Maya that you can then actually 3D track. Like say, maybe you use something like Synthize and then you actually use Maya for your 3D objects. If you don't have something like that, then you then you need to start thinking like, well, if this is 2.5D, how am I going to make this feel like it matches the scene a little bit? All right, and so basically this is your your uh, assignment, right? You're going to want to track something into your scene and and just make sure it, it sticks fairly well to the ground. And yeah, I'll get this posted up on Blackboard, and so look for that. Make sure when you render this out, you use either something like Handbrake or Media Encoder to compress this. All right, thanks so much. Hopefully this has been helpful.